Well, welcome to another episode of Let's Turn This Box Truck Into an RV. You know, I've really had fun with this project, and one of the things I like is it kind of gives me a playground to experiment and work on my woodworking skills and mechanical skills, electrical skills, and uh, like I said, it's kind of a playground. Uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit more about woodworking. Uh, yesterday I brought in uh, quite a few oak planks, red oak planks, from out in the shed. And I spent some time yesterday uh, turning them into sawdust as well as some boards. And uh, I'm going to show you some of that. But first things first, I want to show you this black walnut uh, trim that I made. There's four pieces of trim like this for around the back window. And then there's uh, three pieces for around the side door to trim it out. And uh, I've been watching some YouTube videos and I'm learning quite a bit about finishing. I'm not endorsing any brands, uh, but I might mention some brands, but that's just because I've uh, had good experience with them. And this is one product that I just bought recently that I've been experimenting with. And you can see I put it on this piece of black walnut. It's a uh, gel stain. It's called Spanish Oak. It's almost black. It's basically black stain. But I sealed this board up first with a coat of, in this case, a coat of uh, Watco uh, Danish oil. I like this stuff because it's fairly inexpensive. You can get a gallon for 32 bucks and it makes for a, a good sealer. And it doesn't make for a very good, uh, very durable top coat, but it's a good first coat. Good, seems like a good sanding sealer. And it dries pretty well. So I put a coat of that on to kind of seal it up and then I came back with the gel stain and you can see it got in the grain as well as on the surface and turned this piece of black walnut into something that black walnut should look like. You know, you go through all the trouble and expense of some fine wood like black walnut and then it, it fades on you. Uh, it fades out and it looks like, I don't want to say pine, but you know, you might as well just have pine. So I think, uh, or at least what I've learned, what I'm being told is that by putting a stain like this on it will give it a little more depth and more importantly preserve that color over time so it doesn't fade out. I'm going to come back and put a couple of a uh, couple two three coats of armor seal on here to finish it up with sand between coats with 320. Uh, while we're talking about finishing you can see I've got a, a whole bunch of boards here. I just got done putting one coat of armor seal on and underneath that I had a coat of, again, the Watco Danish oil. Now, these boards are going to go on the side door. They're going to go on the inside of the side door. So it's going to be planked uh, to more or less mirror the walls. The walls are going to get planked with the same type of red oak, natural finish, no stain, uh, sealed up in a couple, two, three coats of, probably three coats of armor seal. I find that two coats of armor seal just doesn't cut it. Three coats is kind of the bare minimum. Tabletops and such, you better be looking at four, five, six coats or more. Uh, while we're talking about armor seal, I'll talk about my technique a little bit tonight. And see, I always squeeze the can to get as much of the oxygen out of there as well. I usually get about 12 months shelf life. After that, it starts uh, getting a little hazy and gummy. Sometimes I've been out to 18 months and been able to use it or I use it on projects that I don't care about as much or just use it as a sanding sealer. But I go through a gallon of this usually in 12 months time, no matter what I'm doing. I put it on with this old coffee can that I've got uh, cut out and a, a three inch foam brush. And again, I hate to mention brands and brand names, but these Gen foam brushes uh, they're the shit. They're the, the thing to use. And you can see I got a whole case of them up here. Finally got done buying them one at a time. Two at a time. I just bought a whole box of these things. And I don't go through them that often because I clean them out. And I can usually clean a brush like this oh, 10, 15, 20 times maybe before I need to toss it. And you can see this one's got a little crack in it, but so what? It's, you know, it still works great. It's, it's real soft and pliable. While I'm talking about brush cleaning, you know, when I was younger, uh, 
painting and staining and varnishing with oil based and having to use paint thinner to clean out your brush I always found that to be a real pain and I'd much prefer to work with latex but most of the good finishes are indeed oil based so here's what I do I've got one can here that I labeled used and I've got one of new so the first thing I do after I'm done varnishing is I've got this brush loaded up with crap yet with the varnish yet I turn my can over you can see I've got a puddle here let the, let the can drain out a little bit and I take this over to the trash and I shake everything out of here that I can and you know I would suggest you do this whenever you clean any paint brushes get as much of the paint out of there before you start cleaning it as you can just shake it out good and then I come in with some of my used paint paint thinner and I'll put maybe a half an inch or so of that in you can take a look in here and you can see there's maybe you can see there's some big clumps on the bottom here but this the clumps seem to coagulate or separate out and you're left with some very usable paint thinner so I put a little of that thinner in I give it a first rinsing again I'll shake the brush out really good and then I take this and I pour it right back into the used so I'm not throwing anything away here and I come back with the fresh paint thinner and I just put you know, maybe five tablespoons a quarter not even a quarter cup sometimes just just enough to get this all good and wet and get some good fresh thinner in there squeeze it out good with my fingers again I'll shake it out good over here and when I'm done I put it between some clean paper towel hopefully that's not eaten by mice too much and uh, I might put it in some a clean cloth too and just sop all the, the thinner out that I can give it a little bit of a flick and you're ready to go you know it's ready to dry it out now you got a little bit of your new thinner here you just add that into the used thinner and if the used thinner starts to getting a little bit you know too chunky then just put a little extra new thinner in each time you clean your brush to kind of renew your used and eventually this is going to fill up and eventually I got to throw it away but I can do it one shot you know I can take it to the recycling place take it to the dump uh, I, don't, I don't have to dispose of it improperly it's not like I'm throwing paint thinner out in the yard so it really works good I don't have to take anything out of the basement the other thing I want to make note of is you got to be careful of these rags once they get paint thinner in them I understand they can start on fire spontaneously combust so if I've got a wet rag I always hang it out on the side of my trash here until it dries out good and what I've got left in here are pretty dried out rags you know scattered about I don't think I have to worry too much about those uh, spontaneously combusting are pretty well dried out okay so back to turning some red oak into sawdust uh, I ripped quite a few boards down here these are two inch they've been uh, run through the jointer twice once on the flat surface and once on the edge and run through the planer to get them even thickness and then I ripped them to two inches on the table saw and so these are going to be rails what's that okay sounds good all right dinner's on 15 20 minutes uh, I got it made here I tell you so these are rails and styles for the uh, cabinetry and I'm also going to use them for the doors to so frame the doors out with a piece of two inch red oak so I got to start here and then I've got some nice wide planks that are fairly clear that I plan on using for the door panels I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna dimension these down I wish I could you know uh, resaw them but it's just too wide for me for any tools I've got to resaw them so I might end up just trashing most of this through the planer and getting it down to a half inch or something like that and I don't know if I'll make a panel door or what but these are for the door panels uh, you can see I still have a bunch of red oak down here for the side walls I actually ripped a little bit more because I'm going to be a little bit short so these are also for the side walls these still have to go through the planer you can see they've just been ripped on a table saw uh, I gotta run them through four times once I cut in about uh, two inches and then I can get up to three inches flip it over two inches three inches and my six inch board gets resawn 
So I start out and carefully set these up to be six inches. These are ripped down to uh, two and a half inches, but eventually they're going to make their way down to two inches, and I'll have to run them through the jointer to get one side flat, and then run them through the planer to get them down to three quarters of an inch. And then I'll take the edge back to the jointer again to get a straight edge, and then finish up by ripping it down to two inches on the table saw. And I'll end up with a stack of wood that looks like these. And, uh, and what? I think uh, that's about it. I better go get ready and have some supper. Thanks for watching. Until next time.